Hello friends, welcome to another Mixed Media Wednesday for the Biggie Luton Design Team. This week I get to play with glim the glitter paste, which is called Iridescent Glitter Texture Paste. And I'm using the Art Wedge. This is the Art Wedge from Vicky Booten, which is really great for putting any kind of medium through the stencil. I'm using the Color Kaleidoscope stencils, and this is the All Over Floral pattern from the Botanical set. So I have gone outside and sprayed this with stencil adhesive, so I'm really mashing it down so that the glitter paste will not go under the stencil. And you can see where I've already adhered some stencil adhesive and sprayed the back of it and when I rip off the tape it took off some of the turquoise color but that's okay and I've never played with this glitter paste before Vicki calls it uh, unicorn tears <laughs> but it is so beautiful and I can't wait to try this out I have an idea that I want to kind of make the glitter paste rain down from the top of the layout I don't know exactly what I'm going to do today because obviously I've never played with this before, but this is super fun and I can't wait to see what happens. It's going to be a fly by the seat of your pants type of layout here. And we're just going to have fun and see what happens. So I'm using the watercolor markers that came out with the Color Kaleidoscope line. And the fun thing about this glitter paste being clear, a clear base or iridescent base is that you can color it to suit your photo. So my photo is a celebration photo of my friend Tiffany from the Scrap Gals podcast came and stayed at my house. She was my house guest. And so I made a little sign and bought some flowers to welcome her to my house. And this layout is kind of that same feeling. I wanted to celebrate the fun it is to have someone come stay with you. We had a really great time and told fun stories, so that's what I want this layout to be. So you can see how opening this has never been, do been opened, <laughs> and so we're going to try it out together and see what happens. This is going to be one of those layouts where you, you never know how a product works until you play with it. So I think that's the fun part is getting new products and seeing how they work and playing with them. So I'm taking off that little bit that was on the lid and going to use that of course. So I've laid down the sugared strawberry color from the watercolor marker. You saw me squeeze that out on an acrylic block. Now I'm using the art wedge and just adding some more of the glitter paste. And you can really see the large mica flakes in there which is just gorgeous. Oh look at them. They look so pretty. I love the large flakes. So my thinking was when I when I bring this down with a palette knife, I want an organic edge on the bottom. I don't want like a straight edge. And so because the photo that I'm using has flowers in it, I really want an organic feel. So that's the reason I'm not dragging my palette knife all the way down to the bottom of the stencil. So when I go to a different color, I'll grab some more of the iridescent glitter gel with the art wedge and then I'll use the palette knife to smear it around. And if you do this while both colors are still wet, you can get a blendy blend. So we'll get a blend effect in between where the pink and the yellow are and it'll create a really pretty orange. So I am going to kind of smoosh over into the previous color just so that I can blend them together. And notice I'm gonna go down and not go completely to the bottom, but I am going to kind of uh, stop and get that artistic look before I get all the way to the straight edge of the stencil. So I really like that orange blend in the middle and I just love how the flakes in this look when you spread it through the stencil. So I'm cleaning off the art wedge there and at this point I'll need to take up the stencil and dry this. I'm going to use a heat tool and I'm going to peel this up gently and my stencil adhesive has left some of the turquoise color from the stencil on my layout, but that no worries about that. If that happens, you can simply take it off with a mono sand eraser. So look at how pretty and how glittery that is. I can't stop looking at it. <laughs> so I'm going to use the extra bit that's on the stencil and I'm going to wipe it off on a, another piece of the Vicki Booten Mixed Media White Foundations paper. I'm using the Art Wedge to get the excess product off because I don't want to waste that. And here I'm drying it with the heat embossing tool or the heat gun. 
and I'm not holding it super close and I'm not leaving it in one area for very long because I don't want to scorch it. So I don't know if you're technically supposed to use a heat gun to dry this, but it worked really well for me as long as I kept it moving really fast. And the reason I dried that was because I want to lay my stencil down and, and go across the rest of the page. And if I did it while it was wet, it would mash and just create a mess. So that's why I dried that first section. So now we're going, going to continue with the yellow color. I, dry, I went to the sink off camera and I washed everything because this glitter paste does dry pretty quickly. So I went and washed off my acrylic block there. And this is the brand new color I haven't used yet, the Watermelon Burst. So here I have more of the yellow and I'm going to continue that yellow section there just because I want the three colors to be in equal thirds across the top of this layout. So you can see that that turned out really pretty. Now I'm using the Juicy Pear and I'll get a little bit more of the glitter paste on there and spread it around with a palette knife just to blend it. It blends super easy. I love the way the watercolor markers blend and I'm making sure not to touch this watermelon burst to the glitter gel that I have on the uh, acrylic block just so I don't get it on the watercolor marker brush tip. So this has plenty of, just that one drop gave plenty of color to color this medium, which is really pretty. I'm making sure to blend it over into the yellow just so I get that light green mix in, in there. And we're going to reveal it, pull it off here. I can't wait to see. Oh, it's so pretty. So, so pretty. So I use the edge of the stencil to wipe off that that edge of the layout where I went over and I'm going to again oh look at it it's so glittery I can't quit, quit turning it in the light because it's just so pretty so here I'm using a Vicki Booten water brush and I've added some of the marker color the same color the sugar strawberry and some water and I'm just creating some splatters down at the edge where I finished uh, smearing the stencil through the stencil so that it will bridge the gap between the hard edge of the stencil, the paste, and the white background of the mixed media paper. So it kind of does look like it's paint dripping from the top. That's what I was going for. I had this idea in my mind that, you know, those layouts where you've seen the paint or some kind of medium dripping from the top of the layout, and that's what I'm going for. I'm just adding each of the color and then touching more concentrated color on some of the drops that came out too watery. Just a great thing about using these markers, you can just go ahead and add some more uh, concentrated color. So that is how the drops and the splatters look. I'm going to dry that with a heat tool. And you can see, even though I've added tons of mixed media onto this background, it is not warped at all. It's completely flat, so that's great. Even though I'm heat drying it, usually if I use other papers and I dry them with a heat tool, they'll really warp because it's uh, not drying evenly across the layout. But this is really flat, so that's perfect. Now I will go about adding the different things from the Color Kaleidoscope line as embellishments over the top. There's a little banner that's yellow and a green heart from the chipboard thickers set. And there's a little chipboard half circle that says that and happy place. So lots of the chipboard I'm using here and some of the enamel or epoxy dots from the other thickers, thickers pack. Now some of these embellishments I can use as well, the little puffy stickers. And I like that there's some circles. Now I'm looking for stickers, just different, different products that will blend with the colors that I have. So I'm putting pink on the pink section and a yellow flower on this yellow section. I'm showing you the sticky thumb foam tabs that I'm using from American Crafts. And I will cut some of these in half just to create a thin enough foam dot to go behind that sticker. And I want everything that's going on top of this glitter gel to be raised up on foam dots just so that it stands up off the background and you can see it a little bit better when it's not flat against the background. And it gives that glitter gel um, a chance to be the highlight of the page. That's really the focal point of the page. That We didn't really use much pattern on the page, but we created our own pattern by using the glitter gel through the stencil. 
And I think that's really fun that you can add any color that you want that coordinates with your photo. I'm just placing this photo here as a placeholder. I am going to use a 2 by 3 photo, but it's not this one. It will be the photo of the letterboard I created for Tiffany when she came to my house. So I want to, each of the paper pieces that I'm going to cut out from the pattern paper from the Color Kaleidoscope line, I'm going to create an ink blend. We're going to get blendy with it and use the scrapbook.com little, uh, what are these things called? They're little ink blenders. So I'm going to make sure that each of these paper bits has an ombre effect. So it goes from light green to dark green, simply using the color wheel inks from Vicki Booten. They blend on really smoothly, so I really like that. And I'll make sure to wipe down my mat before I move to the next color. I'm going to use this Paper Hearts from the Color Kaleidoscope. This Paper Hearts paper is what it's called. That's the pattern name, Paper Hearts. So I will cut out the pink and the yellow and the green since that's my color scheme for today. And the reason I chose pink, yellow, and green is because my photo has flowers that are pink, yellow, and obviously the green stems. So I'm fussy cutting each of these and I'm also going to ink blend each of these as well. I just feel like the ombre color, I added some darker green to that green, some pink to the yellow one, and some yellow to the pink one. Just so that I got a blend for each one and it seemed to coordinate better with the layout when it had an ombre effect. And I love that you, just using your mediums, your inks, you can coordinate something to specifically match what you like. I'm using an old school trimmer here. It's like 20, 25, 20 years old, <laughs> 21 years old, yeah. Hey, it still works. So now you can see that is the actual photo I'm going to use for today. And I like how it looks over the ink blended photo mat. Now I will add some more embellishments and I tied a crochet thread through those heart, fussy cut hearts because uh, it grounded them on the layout better than just having them flat. Now here you can see where I'm taking the yellow pigment ink and blending it on that pink one and creating another ombre for that one because that was one of the only ones I didn't have an ombre on. So I'll just wipe with a wet wipe and go on and <laughs> finish assembling the layout there. And I like how that looks a lot better. And I make sure that I have an odd number of hearts on the layout. Here's a tiny yellow one that I'm going to add the lime green or juicy pear to from the color wheel. And these pigment inks are really nice to use because they blend super smoothly, like I said. They're very creamy consistency and easy to work with. Oh, those were called ink daubers, yeah. <laughs> those dauber, foam dauber things. And what am I doing now? Why have I gone off camera? I probably went to clean something. So we're going to bring the layout back and now is when I get the idea to use that holographic vellum from the color kaleidoscope line. And I'm going to simply cut out, fussy cut a few of these flowers and leaves and stems and add them as accents to the page to create another layer because I like the holographic look with the glitter on the background. It kind of just carries the shininess. And if you'll notice in the photo, there's a reflection of the flowers and the letterboard on the counter. So it kind of subtly references in the photo the reflection, and I kind of like to do that on my layouts. Like whatever element is in the photo, I like to repeat it on the layout. So I'm fussy cutting around the outside of the foil just so that it will kind of look like it's printed and made to be that way. And I like the way that you can see through that vellum to the glitter paste. I really didn't want to cover up the glitter paste because it turned out so pretty. It's a wonderful product and I love that you can color it any color you need. So uh, it was hard for me to cover it up so I really only wanted to... I almost put the photo down at the bottom but I kind of liked every, having everything in the top two-thirds of the layout. So here I will... one of the more solid floral holographic images I'm going to cut out around. These are American Crafts detail scissors that I got. So I'll have three of the vellum pieces around the photo and then one at the top left 
that text word, the light pink one, I'm going to add a holographic image there. And you can see the yellow and lime and juicy pear or lime green blended heart there next to that large leaf near the photo. Now I only need one more because I want to have another section of the holographic vellum. I feel like it needs to tie in um, and not, not just be just around the photo. So I'm going to fussy cut one more and I'll put it under that top left text heart from the Paper Hearts paper. And I love that you can cut out the different patterns and create a whole new feel. So this one is fussy cut, super simple. Then I'm going to decide to put it under that one heart on the top. It, at first I thought I could put it there, but it kind of looked like there was no reason that it, it needed to be there. So eventually I realize it has to be kind of uh, proximity is one of the elements or design principles is proximity. So I'm using that flower underneath the heart. And I really love how the blend between the pink and the yellow looks and I kind of cover up covered up a lot of the yellow to the juicy pear to the watermelon burst and I use those banners as kind of a, a tie-in so that the photo makes sense being right there on the layout and then I'll go about adding some more stickers and then all I have to do is journal this is the layout is almost done I'm going to add a few enamel dots and then I'm going to use an American Crafts detail doodler these are the first line of mix, mixed media products that I got to work with from Vicki Booten. I believe they're around from October 2018. But I have ordered several of those packages of enamel dots because I like using those. Here's the Color Kaleidoscope die cut ephemera pack. And I'm just going to test out some other die cuts and see if I like them. But I really like just using the hearts and the flowers. And plus, I didn't want to cover up any more of that glitter paste. It just was so pretty. Like, I've said it 50 times, but it just is so pretty. <laughs> it was, I'm so glad I got to play with this, and I can't believe I waited this long to try it out. It was a really fun layout to create. My H keeps falling off of my chipboard thickers, so I'll have to grab that and put that back on again. <laughs> I'm seeing if there's anything else that I can add. I was thinking I could cut some of the packaging and add another yellow element. And there we go, the friend chipboard will be perfect. It kind of looks like the font on the letter board. The Heidi Swap letter board has the different fonts in her handwriting. So I really like that friend black and white chipboard because it kind of reiterates uh, the letter board and brings that out to the rest of the page. And the foam dots, I'm just going to adhere everything with a foam dot, including that enamel dot, even though it had, I had stuck it down directly. I didn't like it directly over the glitter paste. So everything's up on a foam dot. <laughs> you get a foam dot, and you get a foam dot, and you get a foam dot. <laughs> you get the picture. So now I just have to doodle. I believe that I will use the detail doodlers from American Crafts to create my journaling and it's just going to say getting ready for Tiffany to come visit. I wanted her to feel celebrated and then on the date and that's it. Just a simple little few lines to remember how much of a fun celebration that was to have my house guest. We had a really great time. We went to a bunch of paper crafting stores and had a fun time telling stories and eating different. We had Mexican and Italian and non-chain restaurants that are local to just here Vegas, here in Vegas, and that was nice to have a friend to go out and talk paper crafting with. <laughs> so I'm looking at any of the other stickers, deciding if I can add anything else. I'm, I think the layout is pretty much done. I might have done it off camera, but I do add some of those holographic chipboard stars that are to the left there. I still have them sitting out, and I decide that I want to add some of the holographic uh, holographic, uh, what do you call that? Media. And here I'm deciding that I need some foam dots on that banner as well. 
I don't put the foam dots up at the top of that banner just because it's going to go over the other one. I'm going to kind of layer the two one over the other one. And I turned it upside down just because I wasn't sure I wanted to adhere it yet. And eventually I will adhere those holographic stars. And I'm using the American Crafts Red Line Tape, so the super sticky red tape. And that will be used behind the one item that I did adhere without a photo, uh, pop dot. And that's this yellow chipboard banner. So this red line tape is super sticky. You will need to use a strong adhesive to go over the glitter gel because it is a kind of chunky glitter gel. So this red line tape is super, super tacky and that will do the job just fine. I have some still shots and I'm so thankful for you joining me for Mixed Media Wednesday and getting to watch me play with the fun new products, the iridescent glitter texture paste from Vicki Wooten. I'll have links in the description box down below and check out my still photos at the, at the end. I'd love it if you'd like and subscribe. Thanks for joining me. Bye!